Can we get some injury updates uh, from you? What, any, any new injuries or any updates on the injuries you have? No, the ones that they were long term, like Emil, Rhys and uh, Gabi Jesus, they are closer. They started to do some activities and they've been outside, but uh, they are not ready yet to, to be contributing. Because the, I think there was some speculation that uh, Emil in particular might be ready for this weekend. Ah, no, for this game, yeah. And, and any more of an update on Jesus? And Gabi's doing really well. He's already been uh, outside a little bit, it's still early stages. He's keep pushing everybody um, every single day, but uh, we need to respect some timelines and, and some processes. But he's doing really well. You got a date in your head, a date in his head when we might see him? No, no, yeah, I think it's still, it's still too far of that. You have to see now when you start to put some loads to that knee and start to get some um, movement and some actions that they're not as controlled as the ones that he's been doing, how Danny reacts and, and whether he's comfortable as well to go to the next stage. Just a brief on contracts, obviously some good news last week about Martinelli. Yeah. He was saying that Saliba and Saka will take care of themselves. Have they taken care of themselves yet? Yeah, they will do in the same case that um, that we deal with with Gabby, we'll deal with the rest and um, things need some time sometimes, but uh, we are delighted with the news of, of Gabby, obviously. You're not used to losing this season, to lose two on the bounce in different competitions, but Two on the bounce. Can you use that almost as a as a positive, as a, as a reboot? The team no longer in the in the comfort zone. Absolutely, it's not about the comfort zone. It's about yeah, in football you're going to lose football matches. Um, very different football matches. The one we lost at City and and against Everton, but um, uh, losing brings a lot of opportunities. as well to look at other things and and see the reaction of the team. And the reaction of the team has been superb this week. And, uh, and tomorrow we're going to put a great performance in in front of our crowd to to try to win the game. We want to Brentford, I'm sure. I just wanted to get one in quickly about the big game that follows that Manchester City and something that Pep's been saying about when you were at City, you never celebrated a City goal against Arsenal. Is that your memory of it, and uh, and why was that? Just for respect, I think, uh, for the feelings that I had toward the club, and probably if I would have scored as a player, I would have done something something similar. Talking about City, it's a question we're asking all the managers today. Your view on the allegations against them at the moment? Well, I'm not going to make any comment on that, I'm sorry. But obviously, as somebody who worked there for, for three years, you won two Premier League titles. I was wondering whether in any way you thought, despite all the work you put in on the training ground, that there's a potential that they might be devalued? I can't respond to that question because I will be responding part of the previous question and another one to that, I'm sorry. But you never, in your role, saw anything slightly untoward going on? No. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, obviously, before the game, because you've got a big game coming up with Brentford tomorrow, um, they are on an incredible nine games, only the double So, what kind of challenge do you think that they will pose after tomorrow? Many different ones, the ones that I put every single week to every opponent, and it doesn't matter the level of where they are sitting on the table. They are extremely efficient at what they do. Um, very clear way of playing, very clear of generating advantages, overloads, um, and sequences of play that, that they want to do. And, uh, and that will be the game tomorrow. And be at your best in every single phase, because they can create you a lot of issues from anywhere on the field. Because you do have that game coming up next week, next week, will that have any sort of part to play in the team that you potentially start tomorrow? No, I think our only focus is, is about Brentford tomorrow. All the preparation has been about that. And uh, let's go into tomorrow's game with the right mindset uh, because we're going to have to be really, really good to beat them. And one final one for me. I mean, talking about the mindset, what was the reaction from the players and training this week following the last Really game? positive. Straight away, we sit together, we discuss the game, what happened, and the opponent played his part, you know, and you have to congratulate Everton for what they did uh, on the day. It's true that were things that we didn't do uh, like in, in other games, and that's the reasons why you lose football matches, but it's always an opportunity to bounce back and to show the character that we have and how much we want what we are fighting for and uh, do it tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Bradley, Hope you well. Um, as a young manager, what's it like being involved in your first title race? Because I suppose last weekend you'd have had the low of losing to Everton and the stress of maybe City closing the gap, and then the next day they go and lose to your rivals, and you know that, that gap's still the same. So how, how do you cope with the, the stresses and the pressure that comes with? As a young manager, yeah. a lot of energy. I am an energy giver. I don't like energy suckers. I just like to give. 
And I like people who gives energy in many different ways. Sometimes it's with his body language, his tone of voice, hugging people, looking for solutions, no excuses. So energy, a lot of energy. It's funny you say that because Martin Odegaard has written a piece this week in the Players' Tribune and, and he said, I challenge anyone to come away from a meeting with Arteta and not believe everything he tells you. He's next level. What, what do you say? What, how do you respond to that? Well, that is great that the players believe in, in what we tell them and, uh, and convince them uh, the best way to, to play and, and win football matches. And at the end, it's completely up to them because they have the most difficult job to, to make that happen. And I suppose one player who maybe doesn't get the credit that other members of the team do is Gabriel. He's been really strong in, in defence this season. What have you made of his performances? Not only his performance, I think the way he's evolving and he's, he's just... I think getting better in every phase of play and everything that uh, that we demand him to do uh, and his leadership skill as well, the importance in the team, um, his mentality as well. Um, I think it's come a long way since since he joined the club. And lastly from me, what have you made of Lauren Balogun's form out on loan in the France this year, top, the top scorer in, in the French league? So happy for him, he's avoided he has again um, a really clear idea of what he wants to do with his career, uh, really ambitious, really committed um, and really brave. And uh, we discussed a lot before he made that move, whether it was the right place to go and, and other choices that he had. He was so convinced and really, really happy for him because he deserves what he's getting. Thank you. Best Thank, you. Okay. Thank you. Well, I know you can't all, all really talk about the situation in Manchester City, but there's a team in a tight race against them. For your team, have to be ready to, to make to take any kind of advantage that might come if they take their half the ball because of all of this. We have enough to look after our own garden, so that's what we do: look after our, our garden. Um, just quickly going back to Balogun, there. Are you, I know you obviously have a lot of faith in him. That's why you rewarded him with that long-term contract not so long ago. But are you at all surprised at just how well the loan has gone and how how well he's doing? I'm very pleased, and obviously. The, when you look at the numbers and what he's doing, it's just uh, incredible. And he changes. It's very rare to see that. Uh, but it's got something special. That's why we decided to, to give him a long-term contract and to have faith on him and, uh, and to give him the long period that he's needing now because the one that he's having now is very different to the one that he had before uh, at Middlesbrough. But that one was very necessary to see the outcome of, of what he's having now. And just on the game of the weekend, obviously Man City on Wednesday, it's impossible not to let yourself think that it's such a huge game. Is there a danger of the players at all taking their eye off the ball this weekend? Is that something that you're going to be you know, so determined not to let happen? No, because for us it's impossible to think about City when we have Brentford. So for us the only possibility is to look at Brentford. Just on Flo, I was just wondering after coming back from Middlesbrough, what were you kind of looking for from him for this loan? Because obviously he's been roughed up a bit in the Championship and then going to leave that you know in France, so what were you kind of looking for him to develop that way? That he had some scars from that uh, period, you know, and uh, there were moments that he suffered, moments that he played, moments he didn't play, moments that he played, but he believed he was in just his best position and throw all the excuses out and get that an extra proper experience and, and add to the next one. And that's why he did put that behind him, but using exactly what work for him, what he didn't work for him, look in the mirror and go to the next one. And I think he's done that really, really well. Is there any thought on the plans for him going forward or do you think about that? In the the plan is now that he finishes his period there, um, assess the situation where he is, where we are, sit down and, and plan the next chapter in, in that development career. Go ahead. Miguel, there were some rebounds ideas for the Super League this week. Obviously, I was going to it a long time ago and then went back on that decision. Um, do you think that's something the club should look to stay away from, or do you think there might be some interest in a revamped version? Another topic that I cannot touch. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the end of the light. Sorry, James, one last one. one. <clears throat> it's, just, it's not a question about City's charges, but obviously one of the possible sanctions is a, is a points deduction. How determined are you to win this league on the pitch and not have to rely or have any other issue about points deduction for your main rivals? Let's focus on what we have to do and, and win enough football matches for that to happen. That's it. You want to win it out there, don't you? That's what it's all about. Sorry? You want to win it on the pitch. Yeah, we have to earn the right to win it, that's for sure. Okay. Going back to the days when you were the Arsenal captain, I think there's a few of us in the room who will remember 
disappointing defeats and you, pretty much only you, maybe you and Murtasako, he's the only people who come out and actually try and get your messaging right, say the right things and try and lift the squad. Obviously a disappointing result at Everton. Do you, do you feel any parallels in terms of the messaging that you've had to do this week or is it just a completely different environment these days? Yeah, it's a very different role for sure, but um, probably the purpose and intention is is the same, you know, and uh, my reaction to them was what I told you guys about how much um, we love them, how much we admire what they've been doing, because at the end it's credit to to them and just help them in the lows and they were disappointed is necessary, is true, because we are here to win and the whole week the way they responded is zero question from me that tomorrow they're going to give absolutely their best to win the game. Do you sometimes think that the lessons you learned as a player here have informed this, this kind of week? Yes, obviously, and, and dealing with groups of people, you know, the environment um, that in football at the highest level is very complex as well because there's a lot of people involved with different roles, with different cultures, different ways of thinking. So to align everybody is not easy, but we felt with this group is, is quite easy.